This past year, I learned to cope with very difficult emotions and experiences using a variety of strategies, some of them being more or less helpful than others. But without a doubt, the most helpful, fulfilling, life-giving strategy that I've found that I hope to continue for the rest of my life is keeping a daily journal. I started journaling out of necessity, actually. I can go into further details about my personal experience later, but I was in a mental space dark enough that writing down my stream of consciousness was one of the only things I felt like I could do to keep myself from spiraling out of control. It was a brutal time, but instantly I felt the benefits of this reflective experience. First, it was deeply centering and meditative. Physically writing on a page helped me to stay focused and calm. And every time my attention wavered, the task felt simple and relaxed enough that refocusing was a breeze. Second, journaling allowed me to start rewriting a more positive story in my life and process my emotions in a concentrated way. I felt so relieved after pouring my heart out onto a page and then seeing my thoughts from a completely different, more positive perspective. And finally, journaling showed me how to explore myself and my inner emotional landscape. Getting to know myself better, specifically befriending the more darker parts of myself, has grown my self-compassion tenfold. If you're interested in transforming your life, here's how to keep a journal in the style that I do. I first recommend that you only journal because you want to or feel like it will help you. If you see it as a chore or do not enjoy the experience, it may still benefit you, but not as significantly. When starting a journal, buy a notebook that inspires you. I love moleskin journals and actually opted for a black one with blank pages because I like having the freedom without having any lines on the page. The point is to select something that feels authentic to you and inspires and motivates you to pursue the activity. Find a time of day to journal where you can be consistent. That's the most important part. My thoughts are clearest before I go to sleep, and the way I live my life, it feels to me as though I accumulate thoughts and feelings throughout the day and naturally have something to do with them before I go to bed. But maybe for you, it is more beneficial to journal in the morning when you feel fresh and want to center yourself and reflect as a way to prepare before the day begins. Whatever it is, I recommend journaling in solitude, in a place you enjoy with things you enjoy. Maybe accompany yourself with an occasional morning coffee or nighttime tea. The goal is to make this your sacred time. This is about you, your mind, your life, and your spirituality too, whatever that means for you. The format of your journal will vary depending on your intention with what you want to get out of it. Therefore, to find a good format for your journal, figure out what your intention is in this season. Mine has been healing, and so here's what my format looks like. First, I'll discuss the day, some things that happened, and what emotions I felt. In this part, I'll be as raw and emotionally honest as possible. If I'm mad, I'm mad. If I'm depressed, I'll admit it, and I'll say why. The first part takes up a majority of my time and feels healing enough just to get it all out there on the page. But the key for me has been finishing every journal with three or more things that I really enjoyed that day, even if they were very small or short moments of joy in an extremely difficult day. I follow each of these things with something I'm grateful for. Here's an example of this layout. I really enjoyed my five minute break at work when I walked around and felt the sun on my tired shoulders. It was a relief. I'm so grateful that the weather was nice today, after all the storms we had last week. I've found that this format greatly accomplishes my goal of healing because of its two-part nature. First, my emotions get a say and feel validated and heard. And second, I reframe them and the entire day in a more positive light, adding gratitude as the special sauce at the end. It's a beautiful little balancing act that makes me feel warm and happy. So for you, set your intention and then make a plan for how you want to format your writing to accomplish your intention. It's okay to see your format as a rough guideline as well. You don't have to be a slave to it. It just gives you direction and a goal. Here's a final note. Definitely put at least the day of the week at the top of every entry. If you want a title, you can do that too. 
I like to include the time of day and my location in my heading as well. And that's pretty much it. You're on your way to journaling like a pro and reaping amazing benefits because of it. Leave a comment about your journaling experience, or if you're a newbie, let me know how it went after your first day. I really want to create a positive, supportive, and uplifting community through my channel, and would love your help with that. I really do care about you guys. And the best way for all of us to do well in life is to care for one another. Thanks for watching, and if you want to support me, consider subscribing and turning on notifications for when I publish a new video.